Hey, this is Presh Talker. You are given a test where you have to match each mathematician to that mathematician's correct birth year. But because you were never taught about these mathematicians, you guess randomly by matching the five names to five years. The question is, what is your expected number of correct answers? If you can solve that problem, see if you can solve the generalization. What if the test asked you to match n names to n years? Now, what is your expected number of correct answers? Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So before I solve this problem, I'm going to go over the question of how many different ways are there to guess on this test. Now many people would guess what's known as a permutation. This is where you match each name to a different year. So how many different permutations of five things are there? Or how many different ways are there to match each name to a different year? Let's start counting. The first name can be matched to any of five different years. One of these choices is going to be your guess. Now the next name can be matched to any of the four remaining choices. One of these is also going to be your guess. Now the next name will have a possibility of three different years. And once again, one of these is going to be your choice. So we see a pattern here. The next name is going to have two possible choices. Once you make your choice, the last name will have only one possible choice. So we can count the total number of possible ways to guess by multiplying each of these options. We have five times four times three times two times one, which is equal to five factorial or 120 different ways to guess. Now, if we have a test with n items, the same pattern will apply. So we're going to have n factorial ways to guess on a test with n items. Now this is going to be a lot of different ways to guess. We're not going to want to enumerate all the different ways and count how many correct answers there are and then take the average. You could do that on a computer, but we don't need to do that. And in fact, the number of ways you could guess is actually even more. Suppose that you allow repetition where you say that you could match multiple names to the same year. How many different ways are there to guess now? Well, the first name can be matched to any of the five years, the next name can be matched to any of the five years, and so on. Every single name can be matched to any of the five years. So we have five different choices where we have five different years. So the total number of possibilities is five multiplied by itself five times, which is five to the power of five, or 3,125 ways to guess. On a test with n items, the pattern is similar. Each of the n items has n different choices. So there will be n to the power of n ways to guess. So even if you could compute this on a computer uh, algorithm, you wouldn't want to do it when n gets very large. So how are we going to solve this problem? We're going to consider a probability principle. So let's start out by asking, how often is the first name matched to the correct year? Well, think about it. There are n possible years, so on average, there's going to be a one in n chance that you match that first name to the correct year. Well, what's so special about the first name? In fact, any single name has a one over n chance of matching on average. You know, the first name that you match, that's just a random choice. So you could make any of the names the first name. And so by symmetry, each name has a one over n chance of matching on average. Now what we'll do is we'll define a random variable x sub k that equals one if the kth name is matched to the correct year and it equals zero otherwise. So why are we doing this? Why are we making the problem seemingly more complicated? It's because we're going to use a property of random variables and the expectation operator. 
what we want to compute is we want to compute the expected number of correct answers, which is the expectation of the sum of all these random variables. Now the key is that the expectation operator has a special property. If you have two random variables, then the expectation of x plus y is equal to the expectation of x plus the expectation of y. This is known as the linearity of the expectation operator. And what's very important to us is that it works even if x and y are not statistically independent. So for example, let's say you're matching two items to two years. You know, if you match the first item incorrectly, the second item is necessarily going to be matched incorrectly because its, our, its answer choice has been taken if you're doing a permutation. So the key is that this linearity of the expectation operator works even if the variables are not statistically independent. So let's apply this property. We want the expectation of a sum of random variables, and that's going to equal the sum of the expectations. Now, what are each of these expectations? Well, e of x sub 1 is the expectation that we get the first name to be matched, and e of x sub k is the expectation that we have the kth name matched. Well, by symmetry, we've figured out each of these is going to be equal to 1 over n. Each name has a 1 over n chance of matching on average. So we can substitute in 1 over n for each of these variables. We now have n terms that are 1 over n. So it'll be an average of 1. And that's our correct answer. In a matching test with n items, you average one correct answer by guessing. So this is a really interesting fact because it doesn't matter if the test has two items or if the test has a million items. You're going to average one if you guess randomly. Furthermore, we've gone over that there are different ways that you could guess randomly on this test. And this is gonna be the same average. So one way is imagine you guess each name to all of the names to a single year. You know, you say all of your choices just go to the first year. You're guaranteed, obviously, one correct answer because one of the mathematicians you'll get to the correct year. So what's interesting about this method is that your average is going to be one, but you're always going to get that one correct answer. You're also going to get all the other answers incorrect. So the other way you could guess is you might, you know, match each name to a different year. You might try and guess a permutation. The problem here is there's actually a 37% chance, or approximately 37% chance, that you might miss all of the questions. This sort of arrangement where each item is matched to, the wrong, to a wrong year is known as a derangement. And it turns out there's a 37% chance of having a derangement. If you're interested in how to derive that percentage, I provided a link. I went over this in the Secret Santa video. So... There are different ways you can guess randomly. So on average, you're going to guess one correct answer. And if you just need one correct answer to pass the test and to go on, you might as well put all the names matching to a single year. But if you need more than one, you're probably better off guessing a permutation because although once in a while there's a 37% chance you might miss all of them, there's probably a good chance that you're going to get more than one correct. Did you figure out this problem? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Hallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.